Thank you for tuning in to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. I am your co-host, Sarah. Joining me, as always, is Tate. We have a great show for you today. We will be covering Dan Hurley's decision to not coach for the Lakers. Uh, we'll be talking about Game 2 between the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. Caitlin Clark not going to the Olympics this year. Um, in segment four, we'll be talking about a model's awkward experience at Disneyland. And then in segment five, make sure you stick around for that because we will be talking about an Edmonton Oilers fan who went viral with unexpected results. Um, as we get started, I would like to remind you to please like and subscribe to the show. Also, we do get a number of questions and comments that come in during the show. If you would like to go to gsmcpodcast.net, you can leave a tip or a donation. That will ensure that we see your question. It will put it at the top of our list. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net for questions and comments. We love to engage with those. Tate, how are you doing? Good morning, Miss Sarah. How are you? I'm doing okay. All right. We had a long weekend, and now we're about to dive into the show, so I'm excited about that. I had, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been one of those mornings. It hasn't been bad. It hasn't been good. It's, been, it's been like neutral chaos. Neutral chaos. That's a that's a weird or one. Chaotic neutral. You know, you see those those <laughs> diagrams and they've got like nine different squares. I'll show you sometime. Okay, I don't know. I don't know neutral chaos. That's a, that's a that's a that's a new one for neutral? me. I'll I'll find it for you. I'm probably saying it wrong and remembering something else. But yeah. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and start talking about our first segment. And I need to turn this one off and the new one on. Dan Hurley, the esteemed coach of the University of Connecticut's men's basketball team, has declined a lucrative offer from the Los Angeles Lakers to become their head coach. Hurley, who has led UConn to consecutive national championships, chose to remain at the university, turning down a six-year, $70 million contract from the Lakers, according to CBS Sports and ESPN. Hurley's decision to stay with UConn underscores his commitment to the program and its players. In a statement, he expressed pride in the championship culture established at Connecticut and emphasized the team's focus on continued improvement and bonding over the summer. UConn Athletic Director David Benedict echoed this sentiment, praising Hurley's contributions and loyalty. With Hurley out of the running, the Lakers are expected to revisit their initial candidates for the co coaching position, ESPN broadcaster J.J. Redick and New Orleans Pelicans assistant James Borrego. Redick, who has no prior coaching experience, has been touted as a potential transformative figure akin to Pat Riley. He currently hosts a podcast with Lakers star LeBron James, which has reportedly strengthened his candidacy. Historically, college coaches transitioning to the NBA have faced challenges. Over the past three decades, 11 college coaches have moved to the NBA without prior head coaching experience, amassing a combined record of, this is, somebody counted this, 1,483 to 1,497 losses. Uh, despite some successes, such as Brad Stevens and Billy Donovan, only Larry Brown has won championships at both levels. Hurley, who has openly discussed the possibility of an NBA career, cited burnout as a potential reason for leaving the college scene in the future. His current success at UConn ensures that NBA opportunities will likely continue to arise. The Lakers, meanwhile, continue their search for a head coach capable of leading the team to glory. The position became vacant following the firing of Darvin Ham after two seasons. Despite the presence of superstars LeBron James and Anthony Davis, the Lakers were eliminated in the first round of the playoffs this season, although they reached the Western Conference Finals the previous year. The Lakers coaching job is one of the most high profile positions in North American sports. Hurley's rejection is a significant moment as the team must now pivot back to Redick and Borrego. This decision will impact the Lakers strategy, particularly concerning LeBron James, who is contemplating his future with the franchise. All right, Tate, as a Lakers fan and mm -hmm. as a podcast host, give me your thoughts. Okay. Um, I'm a little surprised by this one. This one surprised me. I thought this is the perfect job to take for for uh dan i thought this would be that kind of job where it's a big high prof profile job it's a legacy defining job where you could literally be lebron james's last bass i mean professional coach ever so the legacy oh when you when you talk about lebron james you're part of that legacy. And I thought that would be 
a drawing factor. But then the fact that LeBron would only be there for a couple of years, let's say maximum three years, uh, many suspect it'll be less than that. But then you have time to kind of build the team in your image. So I thought that was another factor. And then the last factor why I thought this, why I thought uh, Dan Hurley would come is the fact that the landscape of college basketball has changed dramatically. First off, uh, the, the attention that men's college basketball get uh, has gone down quite substantially. Two, in the world of transfer portals and name, image, and likeness, it has become a lot harder to be, be a coach at the collegiate level. And I've, a lot of coaches have talked about how it's more, it's a lot of spend more time worry, keeping your players focused and keep recruiting your players throughout the year to make sure they don't leave you. And also trying to figure out how do I get more money for my players? instead of what Dan Hurley is great at, which is the X's and O's. And so I, I thought this would be the perfect place for him to go, a high profile job, being one of the highest paid coaches in basketball. I thought these were all things that would make it, you know, attractive for him to switch. Now, there's a different world out there uh, on the negative side. His family is in, lives in that area, and they love that area. So the whole, I've heard people talk about happy wife, happy life. Uh, there's a lot of talk that the wife doesn't really want to go. And that means leaving that area and going to the total opposite side of the country in L.A. So that was one of the big things is uprooting your family. Do you want to do that? Two, I cannot lie. As much as I am a Lakers fan, there's a lot of prestige with being the Los Angeles Lakers coach. But when you look at the Lakers over the last decade, they haven't been able to keep coaches. Coaches haven't stayed there very long. Even when you go there and you win a championship, you're done a year, two years later. Uh, so the fact that the Lakers have had kind of like a revolving door at coach, I thought that was another factor which really hurt them. I think, I'm also, Lakers isn't one of the more wealthier franchises. I would have, I would have liked, I, I know they offer him, what, 70 million, but there's been, if you really wanted him, you thought he was going to be that guy. I think you should have given him a little bit more and added a couple more years because what he, what a, for having a guy who's won back to back national championships, uproot his family that doesn't want to leave, you're going to have to give him an offer that he can't refuse. And that could be that $115, $120 million deal, seven, eight, nine year type contracts and you know so that he knows he's going to be the Lakers coach after LeBron he knows no matter what happens no matter and when you have a contract like that that's a long lengthy contract you know hey the players know this guy isn't a short timer he's going to be here either it's, it's his way or no way especially after LeBron leaves and so that a contract that, that gives him that cachet that he, he needs. I think the Lakers kind of lowballed him a little bit where they should have went in and tried to make him the highest paid coach with the longest tender contract. That, especially when you knew he's coming off of back-to-back -back national championships and his family's the East Coast family. Uh in order to get someone to give up a, an amazing situation in a place that they absolutely love, you had to make it a deal that he couldn't refuse. And the Lakers didn't do that. They made a deal 
and they kind of uh, the whole concept of they didn't go all in they went partially in and i think it cost them and now they're going back and and i and i i fully suspect that it's going to be jj reddick that's going to be the new coach now uh which i don't know what i this whole thing about jj reddick being the next pat Riley, i don't know about that pat Riley is one of the most legendary coaches general managers in the history of basketball right you know i i you could say steve nash at one point in time, people looked at Steve Nash as, as a great on-the-court player, but didn't transition well to the coaching ranks. Magic Johnson, one of the great players of all time, did not transition well to the coaching ranks. So I don't know if I'm, I'm not going to go as far as to say that J.J. Redick is the next Pat Riley, but... I think that's who they're going to lean towards, someone that has a great relationship with LeBron, someone that pe- they kind of would respect because what they really want to do is keep LeBron. I like the, the Stevens uh, concept. I think they should go for, still stick in that concept, stick with a kind of a, a coach, a younger coach that can build a franchise for the new Los Angeles Lakers, the future of the Lakers after LeBron. That's what I would like to see them go with is that type of a coach. All right, well, we will be watching this and seeing who the next Lakers coach will be. We are going to go ahead and take our first break of this segment. When we come back, we'll be talking about game two between the Mavericks and the Celtics and what is next going forward. You're tuned into the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 